Hello and welcome to this section of Calculus Extra Practice with Integration. And in this section we're going to continue working with integration by parts and getting lots and lots of experience. Integration by parts is very much like integrating by substitution. It's easy to understand basically what to do, but the only way you're going to get any confidence at it is just to work lots and lots and lots of different types of problems. So that's kind of my strategy here, is to hit you with lots, of, lots and lots of types of problems so that when you identify it, you'll know what to do and you'll have confidence in what to do. And that's really the most important thing. So let's uh, jump right in to a problem that's actually going to be our first definite integral where we're going to need to integrate by part. So if you have x e to the 5x dx, this is our integral and we're doing a definite integral. So all of the other ones up till this point, we've just had no limits of integration and we've done the integration by parts, we get the answer, boom, we're done. This integral actually has limits of integration so we need to make sure and handle that during the problem. And we also notice that this uh, problem follows a general form. We have an indestructible function, meaning that uh, you, you keep taking derivatives of this term over and over and it really never disappears, totally anyway. And then if you were to, which means it's indestructible, and this guy is destructible because if you keep taking derivatives of this quantity right there, then it just ends up disappearing after a while. So in general, this is a form that we use integration by parts, or at least as a starting point. So we need to define some u. In general, when you see something like this, you want to have u equal to whatever is destructible, and you want to have dv equal to, to everything else. So e to the 5x dx, like this. So we already have two pieces of information required to do integration by parts. We have these two pieces, and now we need to use them to calculate the other two pieces. So for this guy, du with respect to x is just equal to 1. So this means du is equal to dx. Okay. That is the other piece of information we need. And then over here, to find v, we just say that v is going to be the integral of e to the 5x dx. All right, now here, if I just had given you this problem, this particular integral, uh, you know, many, many, many sections ago, when we first learned how to integrate this, you would do substitution because the exponent is not e to the x, the exponent is e to the 5x. And so you do a substitution, you do all the methods that we learn quickly, and you can figure out what the answer to this integral is. But I think I mentioned to you last time we ran into this, you're going to be integrating these little exponentials with, with uh, you know, e to the 5x, e to the 3x, e to the 2x, or whatever in the exponent. You'll be doing it so much that it's probably worth your time just to memorize what this integral actually is. So that's what I'm going to do from here on out. The integral is, e to the 5x is always going to be there because when you integrate an exponential you always get what you originally had back. The only thing you need to remember is in front of it you have to go 1 over the derivative of the exponent. In this case the derivative of 5x is 5 so it's 1 fifth e to the 5x. This is not magic. If you don't understand what I'm doing here then just go here, do a substitution and then integrate just like we've always been doing and the 1 fifth is going to end up coming out and the e to the 5x is indestructible so it just kind of hangs around. So that can save you a little bit of paper there. And here we have the four pieces of information that we really need in order to do integration by parts. Right? So integration by parts would be u v minus integral v du. Right? And so what we have is u is x, so we'll have x. v is 1 fifth e to the 5x, so that handles the u times v, minus the integral of v right here, 1 fifth 